Welcome to Alpha 2, Lesson 7-3, our last lesson of our unit before our test, um, interpreting exponential models, the advanced version of that, because you have to do some cool manipulations and tricks and stuff that you have learned before. Uh, today's date is January, that's supposed to be a one right there, 6, 2021. Don't write that zero, Mr. Sindel. Our objective today is to Andres. Um, so we can't see your thing. Oh, oh yeah, make it a uh, single. It's ah, double right it now. Throws the screen. Yeah, thank you for. Oh, there we out. go. There we go. All right. Um, what is our objective while you're here, Andres? Use rules of exponents to convert exponential equations to new forms to solve problems. There it is. So, um, the best way to see the different tricks is through examples. So example number one, we have this capital B of T is representing a number of bacteria every T seconds. And we have an equation, there it is. So it says every second, there is a what percent addition or subtraction from the total number of bacteria? Okay, well, first of all, um, you guys are all gonna have your cameras on because otherwise you're gonna start losing points for your engagement and stuff like that. Um, Thumbs up or thumbs down, is this exponential growth? Thumbs up or is this exponential decay? Thumbs down, everyone tell me, is this growth or decay? This equation, 1,200 times 0.92 to the power of T over five. Growth, ah, the pen fell down. Growth or decay, everyone thumbs up, thumbs down. Vote now, vote now, vote now. And if you don't know, put thumbs in the middle, that's fine. The answer here is exponential decay, thumbs down, but who can tell me why? Raise your hand, who can tell me why? Charles, tell us why. Uh, because the um, ratio is, wait, common ratio, I, I don't know, is sure, yeah. less than one. Yep, it's less than one, 0.92, we can all nod our heads, that's less than one, therefore it is exponential decay. And I don't know what, why my pen is being so laggy, this is decay. If it's decay, that means we're not adding to, we are subtracting from. So immediately I can say, yes, this is gonna be subtracting from. But remember, um, this percent is gonna be um, subtracting from, and I don't know what that percent is because it's every one second. If it says every second, it really means every one second. And this is every five seconds because it's being divided by five. If I plug in one here, this is the power of one fifth, that doesn't work. So somehow I have to manipulate this so that our base is going to change. You haven't done this before this unit. You've done it before in previous units though. I'm going to change this 0.92 so that this is to the power of just normal T, not T divided by five, just normal T. How are we going to do that? I have one hand with an idea. Anyone else have an idea? Again, I'm gonna have to somehow change this bottom base number, this common ratio, whatever we're calling this, so that it has a power that's just to the power of T instead of T divided by five. And your, my, my hint is you're using rules of exponents because it says that in our objective to do that. Charles, what's your idea? Um, well, my first idea was not using, well, kind of, but I think that if you multiply the whole like 0 0.92 by like one to the power of five, it would cancel out and T would be left. You're so, so close. Um, if you multiply anything, like I'll just say a number. Oh, it has to be the same base. So it'd be 0 0.92. Five. Yes, so um, that's, it's close to the answer. Um, so let, let's see what happens if we do that. Um, if we do 0.92 to the power of T over five, and you said multiply by 0.92 to the power of what? Five. Power of five. That does indeed cancel out the fives because, well, does it? So if you do that, when five I multiply the bases, what do I do with the exponents? What operation, Charles, do I do with the exponents? Oh, the you add them. 
you add them. So I'll get 0.92 to the power of t over five plus five, which is close. It doesn't cancel out this t divided by five. It makes it unfortunately worse. So, so then you, would you put it just like to another power of five? You, you kind of do, yeah. So um, I think there is an easier way and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that path right now to show this trick. You're really just gonna use up the power of one fifth and absorb it into this number. So this is my trick that I'm doing. I'm saying I have 0.92 right now, 0.92 to the power of t over five. I can rewrite this as 0.92 to the power of one fifth to the power of t. Because when I multiply or when I undo multiplication, when I separate these into two different pieces by division, that's really a power to a power. And if you go in reverse, if I go from here to here, one fifth to the power of t means you multiply and you get one fifth of t or t over five. They're the same thing. So these two things are equivalent. Hopefully you're okay with that. Now's a good chance to ask like, where did that come from? What rule am I invoking? No questions. So we're okay with this. Well, then I'm done because if I say, what is 0.92 to the power of one fifth on my calculator, that is our new base. And look here, this T is not being divided by five anymore. It's T divided by one every one second, which is what this question was originally asking for, every one second. So now on my calculator, what is 0.92 to the power of one fifth? And then I come over here and I say, okay, go to my calculator. And they say, what is 0.92? And if I zoom in here, ooh, maybe too much. Wait, actually I can zoom in this way with my fingers so it looks better. 0.92 to the power of a fraction one fifth. And that, that new base that I'm really looking for is 0.9835. I'm just rounding to four decimal places randomly, 0.9835. So um, 0.92 to the power of one fifth is equal to 0.98, and I already forgot my numbers, 0.9835. So that is our new base, but we still haven't even answered the question yet. The question wasn't asking, what is that new base? It's asking, what is the percent subtraction from? So I need to convert this to a percent. How do I do that? It's the same steps that I talked about all the way back in 7-1 that we reviewed in 7-2 yesterday, and I'm doing again now in 7-3. Not Charles, he's been the percent conversion master. He did all the problems yesterday. How do I convert 0.9835 into a percent? And again, you always need to be thinking, compare that to one. You're either gonna do one minus one plus, something like that. Come on guys, we've done this in two lessons already. You did it in like the last three homework assignments. How do I convert 0.9835 into a percent? Yeah, Jade. You would add one and yeah, then divide 1. it. 1.9835. So um, then you move the decimal twice to the right? twice to the right, so you get 198. Uh -huh. I don't that know if that's right, though. That's just, that's just a You're guess. close. You're really close. Yeah, you do do something with one, but you don't add one. Um, if you're going to a percent, we always need to get rid of one, because if I just had, if this base was one, that just means it hasn't changed. If I keep multiplying by one, multiply by one, multiply by one, that means my number isn't changing. Okay. But if I multiply by something slightly less than one, then I'm moving slightly down. I'm decaying with a slight amount. So I'm saying, okay, well, how much difference is there between this and one? So subtract one. The difference between 0.9835 and one is, we have a calculator, so we'll just say ANS, answer, minus one, hit enter. We are going down minus 0.016. So this answer right here, very informal work, I know, is negative 0 0.0165. Okay, now you've figured out what the decimal representation is in terms of how much you're adding or subtracting from one, but now convert it into a percent, which you did correctly last time. How do you do that again, Jade? 
How do I convert this decimal into a percent? Move the decimal twice to the right. Twice to the right, and you get minus 1.65. The minus sign is the word subtraction from, so that's where the minus sign went. And then the percent is point or 1.65. Okay. Perfect. So you're always comparing that common ratio, this base, this number underneath the exponent, always compare that to one. How much difference is that to one? Always subtract one. You're always gonna be doing this step and then you're always gonna, well, if it asks for a percent, then convert it to a percent. This one, it doesn't ask for a percent in example number two. But before I do that, yeah, questions, Andreas. Um, so can you also get a percent by just multiplying my 100, like 0 0.0165 and then multiply it by 100? Yeah, multiplying by 100 is the same thing as moving the decimal place right twice. Exactly. Any other questions about example one before we move on to example two? And I don't see any messages, private messages or raised hands. Okay, example number two, capital M of T. That's gonna represent the mass of a radioactive element every T weeks. And it's 0.98 to the power of six T plus three. Okay, what form do we need this in? Every week, the mass is multiplied by a factor of what? So a little bit different. One thing that's different is obviously it's not a variable divided by anything. Now I have some multiplication and addition but it is a little bit easier because I don't have to convert it to a percent. It's actually asking, what is the factor? So once we have that base, restate that base right here and we're done. But we have to change the base again, using rules of exponents because that's what the objective says. Use rules of exponents to convert um, in, to new forms, I guess, convert the base. Somehow this number down here is going to change. And once we change that number correctly, that's gonna be the answer. How are we going to do this though? Think back to your rules of exponents. Eventually I need to convert this form into some number out front times some base to just the power of T. And then once I find that, what is B? So how do I convert this form into this form? And again, just use your rules of exponents. Start with 0 0.98, 0 0.98 to the power of six T plus three. How do I break apart these two pieces? 6t plus three. How would I do that using rules of exponents? Try to separate pieces as much as possible here. And I'm getting a lot of confused faces, so I'll give you a hint. My hint is you're invoking this rule, this rule that says a to the power of uh, let me make it x to the power of a. x to the power of a times x to the power of b is equal to x to the power of a plus b, except you're doing it in reverse. How do you do that? Ooh, more hands now. Can I get a few more hands? More hands? Maybe, maybe, no? Okay, Andres, tell us how to do it. Um, would it be 0.98 to the power of 60 times 0.98 uh, to the power of 3? equals 0.98, yeah. 60. yeah. So that's the first step. You break it into two pieces. By the way, if you're really thinking deeply about this problem, 0.98 to the power of three is just a number. There's no more exponent. There's no, or there is an exponent. There's no variable in the exponent. There's no variable at all. This is just a number. This thing right here is A which means, long story short, we don't care about it. As I said before, our answer is gonna be B. We don't care about what A is, so I'm just gonna kind of cross that off for now. Yes, it is used in the equation. Yes, if we were trying to rewrite the equation in total, we would need it. But because this question is only asking about the, the factor, the scale factor, or this common ratio or the base, we have a lot of synonyms now, we are only going to pay attention to B, the thing that is the base where the exponent is a variable. So that's why I'm ignoring it now. But we're not done because this is every one six weeks. We want it every one week. We have this annoying six that just like in the previous problem, somehow I'm going to absorb that six into the base 
to make this base a different number. It's the same exact trick. So look back, maybe if I can zoom out a little bit, look back at example one, how did we absorb that number that was in front of T? In this case, it was a little bit different because it was divided by a number, but I'm still absorbing it into the base to leave T by itself. I see Charles has his hand raised, but does anyone else know how to apply that same trick to this problem? Okay, Charles, go for it. Um, well, couldn't you have 0.98 to the power of one over six with the uh, parentheses to the power of T? Um, not quite. So you have 0.98 to the power of six T. There's no one six in this case. The last problem had a fraction, T over five. This problem doesn't. Oh, okay. So it would just be six and then times the power of t. Or to the power of t, yeah. So 0. Yeah. 0.98 to the power of six, all of that to the power of t. Nice. And we now need to figure out what is 0. 0.98 to the power of six. That is our new base. We switch over to our calculator. What is 0. 0.98 to the power of six? It is 0. 0.8858. So that means I'm gonna have 0.88 five, eight to the power of T. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to have T by itself in the exponent. It started off with six T plus three. We used two different properties of exponents to kind of rip things apart. And we have our new base of 0.8858. And we don't even have to convert this to a percent. It just asks, what is the factor? The factor is that thing. It is 0.8858. And we're done. So I've showed you two tricks so far. In fact, this example two had two tricks at the same time. I'll show you the third and final trick that you might need for the homework tonight. Here it is, example number three. Now I have this function. Oh, wait, I'm going too fast. I know I am. I'm sorry. Are there questions on example two? Let's do this. Vista five on example two. How well do you feel? about example two, five is, I really, really understand it pretty well. I could do it on my own if the numbers were changed a little bit. Um, one is like, very lost, do it again. I'm gonna ask a question because I am really struggling. I've got a four from a student in private, a five on camera, three on camera, three on camera, three privately messaged me, number three on camera. Okay, no, nothing two or below. So no questions on example two or example one or anything like that three on camera. Okay, and let's move on to our final example. There's nothing, oh my, there's more example. Oh, that's because there's two assignments tonight. I might split this up, we'll see. Example number three, capital M of T represents the mass of another radioactive element. So we have a very creative Mr. Sindel who couldn't think of another example. Um, here's our function. Capital M of T is equal to 150 times one or 27 over 64 T. So the mass of the sample decays by a factor of three fourths every how many months, which is different than the questions that we've asked before. The previous questions have been all asking about the, the scale factor by the, the common ratio by that base. We wanna know what is that base? This is telling us the base. It says, hey, that base should be three fourths. This number right here needs to be three fourths, but it's not. It's 27 64, which doesn't even look close to three fourths. So we need to turn it into three fourths and then <laughs> pop out a power and apply that to T. So how do I rewrite this to the power or as three fourths? Are there any ideas? So I somehow need to say, this is gonna be three fourths to some new power. You need to figure out this number and then I'll multiply that by T because it's also to the power of T. Three to what power is 27? Four to what power is 64? Hopefully they're both the same number, otherwise bad things are going to happen. One person has an answer. Two people have an answer. I think, maybe. Let's see scratching his chin. I'll ask the question again. Three to what power is 27? And four to what power is 64? 
Jose? So would it be to the power of three? It is to the power of three, yeah. So if I come down here and say, um, this function is exactly equal to, I still have that 150 that I don't care about, three fourths, all of that to the power of three to the power of T. That's exactly the same thing. And then you can say, yep, that's 150 three fourths to the power of three T. Perfect. So we, we've correctly now have the, the, the factor of three fourths. You can see, yep, three fourths. But now we have to answer the question. And this goes all the way back to seven dash one. Three T, how many months is that? What number, another way of asking this, what number do I plug in here to get this to one? What number T right here do I plug in in order to get this value to one? Andres? Would it be three? If I plug in three, three times three would be nine. That doesn't get to one. Try again. What number um, do you plug in to get that power to one? <clears throat> Not negative three, right? No, because that'd be negative nine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, never mind. Um can I give it to someone else? Yeah, I think there's only one other person with his hand up. Yeah, Charles. Uh it would be one point three. One point one, three one over three. three. One over three. Oh yes. One over three is right. If I say three times one over three, that does get to one, which means I still have that scale factor of three fourths. The reason that I wanted this exponent to be one was because if it's not one, then that is not the right scale factor anymore. Three fourths to the power of one is still three fourths. So every one third months. And this is again, if you're a master of uh, lesson seven dash one, this answer was pretty straightforward. It's the same type of question. It's just modeling or uh, pushing a lot of concepts together at the same time now. So I, as a teacher, am going to make the call to say, yeah, this was already hard enough. I'm going to get rid of that second assignment that I assigned, which is the back half of this, and say, we're just going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to push the test back to Friday um, instead of Thursday. So we're done tentatively with the notes. I'm, I'm splitting these notes into two pieces. Let me go like that. Um, we've done the first side. We'll do the back side tomorrow and a new homework assignment tomorrow. Um, let's give me a fist of five on the, the first half of this page. Like how well can you do examples one, two, and three on the fist of five? Okay, Andres has a question, but let's do fist of five and I'll get your question in a second, Andres. Fist of five, I'm getting a three privately, a three in camera, three on camera, three on camera, four on camera, three on camera, three on camera, three on camera. So it looks like our average is about a little above three. I would say like 3.1, 3.2, somewhere around there. Um, Andres, yeah, what's your question? Um, is the next page, is it harder than the first one? I think it's easier, quite a bit easier. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, teach, we'll learn that tomorrow. It'll be a nice, easy day right before the test, so you don't have to stress too much. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll call that good.